Hey guys, welcome to a game that just came out eh, a couple hours ago. I've been playing it for a little bit and I decided, yeah, sure, I'll do a little bit for YouTube here. So uh, I'm going to just delete my profile uh, and just make a new one. Uh, alpha, that's definitely me. I'll keep the tutorial tips on just uh, to show you guys. So there's a couple of settings here. I put the combat speed slightly up, but I'll actually slow it down just for, I guess, the first run or two. Uh, and they have like a bunch of things here and I'm a newer-ish player, so uh, we're gonna keep most of it on. So it kind of uh, brings you into here. So there's like a Vec threat and the, and the story is very simple, very fast. So they've already failed, essentially. That's how you start. And the idea is uh, Ralph uh, is our time traveler and he went, he, he has now gone back in time and he has a bit of experience and stuff. He's got two bonus XP per kill. Uh, and that's how you start out and you can give him uh, which mech you want. So the way this game works is it's, it's kind of like a sort of twist on sort of XCOM-ish kind of gameplay. Um, and I, I'll get more into it, but uh, we don't get much options with the squad. Um, and even like even customized random squad. I didn't really unlock anything else yet. Um, all I know is that the way you get more mechs um, is you need to unlock these achievements and they give you like, uh, so it says drown three uh, enemies in a water in a single battle. Uh, you can kill an enemy five or more tiles away with a dash punch. And this is, uh, so I believe this guy gets a little bit later. And complete first corporate island. Uh, and so it's, it's divided into some islands. So it's a roguelike with a little bit of persistency in terms of um, if when you lose, you can bring one person back with you and that's it. Uh, and then you start over. So that's the idea is like, that's how it's like a roguelike because you, you reset, uh, they basically the person comes back in time and tries to save the world again, essentially. So we have, uh, I'll, I'll get more into what these guys do, but if I actually hover over them, this guy shows you his main ability. Uh, which is like just an artillery cannon. It damages the thing you hit and moves everything else around it. And moving around things is uh, ties a lot into this game. Uh, this is a cannon, just fires in a straight line and pushes him back. And this guy has a heavy damage punch, basically like a two damage punch, pu pulls pushes him back one tile. Um, so let's get going with this. So you're you're actually supposed to you're intended to actually lose this occasionally. It it is actually a pretty difficult game. Uh, so we'll get it. We'll get right into this. Um, so this is uh, archive Inc. It's the only island that's available to us right now uh, And it tells you the temperature and the kind of uh, vec that you're uh, bound to be against The game is very good informationally So is there a man? Uh, we will decline the tutorial because I will sh I will show you just when we get into the game All right, so the way it works is you have all these places. So the way uh, the way the all these things are connected in terms of like when I when I do this one right here, chronology or chronology hall, uh, these two here unlock for me to get. Uh, and so the way it works is the stars count for reputation, which is a currency they can use to uh, unlock more things when you finish the island. Uh, the lightning bolt is power and uh, finishing the, the optional objective, uh, which is uh, this, in this case it's a uh, coal plant, you have to protect it. Uh, that will yield an, an additional power grid point. And power grid points are basically uh, your overall sort of health, I would say. The, the health of the mechs don't matter, it's the health of the buildings. It's, this is a game where you're supposed to actually defend buildings. And it's interesting because it, it gives for some very interesting tactical choices. Um, so this one says here that any damage uh, that uh, uh, that the power grid takes will persist, but the mech damage will not, which is uh, important to note. So uh, I'm gonna dismiss this and, oh yeah, so I'll tell you here, um, there's a couple things that we want here. We want uh, power cores are nice, grid power is nice, and core reputation is nice. I think the reputation is the best thing to get uh, for the most part, cause like I can get these lightning bolts and stuff and it would be kind of whatever. Um, I, I usually try, my strategy right now is I usually try and get as many of these corporate reputation modules, uh, or whatever they're called as possible. So we'll start off with this one. Um, and I'll, I'll give you some more when we get in there. So also, by the way, grid, uh, grid defense is a chance that, uh, any building will resist damage, but that's like, that's really RNG. That's super RNG. So it's kind of how it works. Uh, all right. So. This one we're supposed to destroy dam, and we're supposed to block Vec from spawning three times. So we're gonna get right into this. Um, so unfortunately, it looks like there's not much of a point in us destroying the dam right now, but 
we can pretty much just start off with that. So we get to place our mechs right now. So we place these two guys and this guy in the back. And this may matter in some certain cases, but that's pretty much it. Um, and also, they have really good like tutorial stuff. If I hold control, it tells you their attack, how much they can move, and they can, the fact that they can fly. This guy is... Um, he has a web, so he webs a target, and then the next turn he, he hits me with it. So, we'll get more into it. So, you, you should get an idea of what this game is about uh, really fast here. So, the, the guys here take their turn, and they don't do anything else. Um, and, also tell, and, and they basically, it gives you a chance to react. So, it tells you exactly what they're going to do, and it's your job to kind of manipulate it uh, in such a way where... Um, you don't basically uh, you ba basically don't lose assets or mech da and take damage from your mechs and I have like health for every single one of them so <clears throat> give you a good example here so I uh, this is my artillery guy he has a lot of range I'm gonna move him back here and I'm gonna actually do this I'm not gonna damage any of them but in with this action I'm making this guy attack an empty tile so he's just useless so he doesn't do anything this guy no longer is attacking anything so he's useless this guy is attacking nothing he uses, and also he's on one of the spawn points, and I'm supposed to actually block spawners. So it doesn't prevent whatever Vec is going to come up from ever coming up, it just basically blocks for a turn and he takes damage. So it actually tells you in the bottom right there, uh, any unit blocking the space will take one damage. So he's going to take a bit of damage, and he's just going to kind of chill out there. So that's, that's the nice thing about uh, that, is it, you prevent, you kind of delay one from spawning, but he will come back eventually. Uh, and so with the rest of my turn, I'm pretty much just going to shoot this guy, and I'm probably going to break the dam now, which will cause water to spawn everywhere. Uh, so walking Vec will um, will drown, and but my robots will not, but they won't be able to use their weapons. So now I've done my turn. You can reset the turn, but you can only do it once per battle. Uh, and you can also undo your moves, but once you fire uh, and take an action, you can't undo it anymore. So uh, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that, how that went. So they're just going to do their turns, which are basically uh, virtually nothing. And then and then the rest, the, this guy will spawn up here. So you can see now they're going to go into a position and, and try and change some other things. So we got a couple problems here. Um, so what we can do is we can go here and punch this guy, but we have to deal with these two assholes. So I would like to... So, this guy is now blocking my two mechs from being able to move anywhere here, so that's kind of an issue. Because it means that these guys are much less useful. Because um, I would like, I would have liked this guy to essentially shoot over there, but I think I can still... Yeah, because when he's in the water, he cannot shoot. So, I, I, the perfect position would be able to shoot over here. It gives this, guy, this, gets this guy out of the way, and this guy goes over one of the spawners. But it looks like we're going to have to make a couple sacrifices here. Um, thing is, I, it, it would appear that I can move uh, him over here and that's it. So I don't have many great options here for defending. Uh, this is the unfortunate part with me breaking the dam here. Uh, so uh, I'm going to have to... If I get a space over here, would it be any good? Because this guy is just useless right now. Actually, wait, let's try this. So I moved him out of the way, which means now I can actually do that. There you go. And because I don't want... Uh, so, the way it works is this guy is now going to shoot uh, uh, him over here. So, we're going to actually keep it that way. Uh, if we if we actually hold Alt, we can actually see the order of the enemy action. So, this guy's going to attack first. This guy's going to attack. Then this guy's going to attack. And then this guy's going to shoot him. And he's going to kill his ally. So, that's a pretty good result, I'd say. Um, unfortunately... Uh, we're probably just gonna end up killing this guy because it does way more damage. So, and but once again, if you push back an enemy into another guy, they both take damage, which is really nice. Uh, this also counts for your own units as well. Um, so, with this action, I'm also gonna set the uh, forest tile on fire and says if, if damage it lights on fire. Fire is an important thing. If your mechs get caught on fire, they take damage every turn. Uh, the Vex will, as far as I know, just take damage per. Um, Per, uh, to take damage while they're on the tile. So I'm gonna hit him. So it says if a unit stands on fire, we'll ignite and take damage every turn. Okay, I guess I ignites for every turn. 
So this was actually a pretty good turn. So like no, none of the buildings got hit. Um, uh, and one of the spawners is still getting blocked because of the way I positioned my, my units. So that's really good. Once again, I'm kind of new to the game, so if I fuck something up, I apologize in advance. Uh, this is kind of how it works. So this guy is giving me an, a difficult choice. So they're, they're smart in this way, where uh, I'll, I'll explain what this guy is actually first. Uh, so this guy is giving a passive bonus. The green one gives a health bonus, uh, and we can actually see what he is by this. Um, invigorating spores. They, he has everyone has one more HP as long as he's alive. So that's uh, not terribly great. Um, fortunately, we have a lot of options here. So first off, I'm gonna just punch this guy because screw that guy. So everyone got a little bit less health. In fact, they I think they took damage for it. Um, now you might be going, why don't I just shoot this guy? Well, you can actually see by the action, it's going to actually damage the buildings. So this is a game where you actually want to keep uh, the buildings alive. Uh, but what I can do is I can shoot this guy. And then I can, uh, I can artillery shell this guy. So he doesn't attack the building anymore. So it's a very strategical game. I I'm actually impressed. It's very good. Uh, the FTL de devs did a really nice job here. Alright, so he's going after this. Alright, so there, here's your actions right here. So, some of these are pretty easy. By the way, we have victory in one turn. Also, I forgot to block another spawner. I probably could have done that. Uh, we missed one of the bonus objectives because I was too busy trying to explain this shit. Alright, so here's what I can do. I can go here and shoot that guy. So, I am now blocking the shot that's going to go on the buildings. And then... Um, I don't have to really too, too much worry about that. The only thing now I have to worry about is this guy. Um, but I think I can get him, actually. There you go. And then the last guy is right here, and I mean, I don't think he can really do anything. Uh, so we can just skip our turn here. Because uh, none of the buildings are going to take damage, so we don't really care. But we didn't get the bonus objective, which I'm sorry, my bad. So, um, oh yeah, so more important things about the mechs uh, taking damage. So they will repair all the damage after battle. If a mech is reduced to zero health, uh, the pilot dies, but the mech is disabled for the battle. What happens is um, mechs don't actually need a pilot, but apparently pilots are better because uh, the pilots have like innate bonuses. But it doesn't mean that the mech won't will just disappear. No, it just means that there's nobody going to be piloting it anymore. And that pilot can also be someone that you brought recurringly through... A couple of instances and you and you kept them going back in time basically to try and change things so it can be it can be a big deal so a lot of this game as it as it progresses in difficulty is yeah i miss the optional a lot of the game uh later on is is about um like dealing with losses and and sustaining yourself kind of thing and, and learning about that kind of stuff so this one, this one's interesting. It has um, optional objectives of uh, defending these uh, satellites here. So I'm gonna put these guys back here. All right, and this is actually another mechanic of the game. The these are the pods. These are extremely nice to keep alive. So as far as I can tell, the Vec won't uh, do anything. It, it says you can collect it with your mech or just defend until the end of the battle. Um, so if the vet get put on, pushed onto it, or they shoot it, uh, it goes away. That's, that's what happens. So we can collect it with a mech, but it's not necessarily the most preferable thing to do. So this one's going to be pretty easy to deal with. We just need to move away and we need to defend these satellites. Um, so how will we deal with that? That is a very good question. So this guy's not going to do anything here, uh, which is nice. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do, I want to push this guy all the way back onto that tile, so let's do that. Alright, and this guy is easy, we, we just get to kind of move him around. Uh, I guess, I was thinking of getting this guy, but like I said, the health bonus is actually not that big of a deal. Probably could have gotten the, uh, the bonus objective there, but it's, it's whatever. So he's just going to shoot there. This guy does nothing. So we're just trying to prepare for the rockets to launch. Alright, so he's now going over there. Alright, so an important thing about the rockets is that... So everything's a bit different. So on the next turn, everything around uh, around this rocket is going to die. Um, 
so we have to make we have to make sure that we're not standing around it but we can also put them into a position to basically make it more difficult for themselves uh i would really like to take care of this guy but i don't think we're going to be able to i probably can push him back though so that might be the best thing to do all right this may not have been the best decision making but I think it'll be I think it'll work okay. Okay, so the attack order so he's gonna take fire damage. Oh he didn't he's not actually going to die. Okay. That's a bit of a problem. The thing is it won't actually die in one hit, but I think I can kill it anyways with that by taking a bit of damage myself. That's unfortunate, but yeah. I, I thought, I, I forgot the fact that he's not going to take 2 damage from this, but at least he will die next turn, but not until the end of the turn, because he's going to take burning damage, and then he's stopping one of the spawners, so he's then going to take damage from that. So, it's this game is very much about the order of operations, kind of, like how they go attack kind of a thing. So one of the rockets is gone now. Alright, that guy died to, oh, because the, the spawner died. All right. So for this next one, so we can just keep this here because we'll just get it at the end if we, uh, if as long as we don't get it killed. Uh, would really prefer not standing on the the spawner though, but we can make him stand on it. Uh, so we can just do this, and we can then push him back so he's not attacking that anymore. And then this guy can just stand on the spawner so nobody else spawns there. Uh, and that's good enough for me. So, like, as I said, like, if you're playing it smart, then, like, even though he has 1 HP, he's not going to die unless something attacks me. Yeah, this guy can't do anything right now. He can't even repair it. It's useless. But it's fine. Oh, he died to fire damage, so he didn't even merge, actually. It's all good, though. All right. So remember, it does have 2 HP, so we actually have a little bit of leeway here. Uh, and all we have to do is actually really just prevent them from destroying objectives for one turn. Uh, so we can just uh, move this guy over here and shoot that way. The building doesn't go down at least. And I mean, the easiest thing for me to do actually would be to just move these guys away. And then they're not hitting anything at all. And this guy doesn't even need to do anything, he just sit there and repair for a turn. Just showing you how the repair works. He, he wastes his turn and doesn't do anything, but he kind of he kind of heals himself. He would have healed it anyways by the end of this, so. So it kind of shows your trajectory. So yeah, he attacks one tile in front of him, this guy attacks in the line, and there's nothing there. So, and then the uh, missile will go. There you go. There's, there's no bonuses for killing everything unless it actually says that there's a bonus for killing everything. That's that's one of the important things to note. Uh, and there we get the, our first pod, and it just has a reactor core. Uh, not the worst thing. So we got one reactor and we got uh, three corporate reputation. So the reactor cores um, you basically can use on anything. Um, I will use it on this guy, I think, to get him... Uh, maybe some more health or something. And the, and the reactors kind of work exactly as they do in FTL. You basically can put it into something and then, uh, let me just you see, toggle it. But you kind of probably want to keep his only weapon powered, so that's a good idea. Uh, so we're gonna do that. Um, and by the way, so f as for the island, you don't actually complete everything. You can only complete up to uh, up to three. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, with three remaining. The, the last three will just die, so uh, it's just kind of how the game works. Um, for, and if something has less uh, re uh, rewards, like this one for example, it has a buff. It has something to make it easier, so this has defensive shields. Um, and if it has even more, like three things for, for example, it would have, um, it, would have uh, it would be more difficult, essentially. So this one is going to have air support. We're supposed to kill at least seven enemies and, c and protect the coal plant. And that gives, will give us uh, a, bit of, a bit of energy. Uh, so th this is the best way of actually restoring energy in this game. Uh, and then we're going to put the artillery in the back there. So, I'll show you how this works. So this is a this is an environmental effect on the mission. 
And so you can see that, okay, so now there's going to be uh, uh, something coming in here. And they're not, they're not going to want to stay in it. They're going to be smart about it. For some reason, this guy is just standing here. But once again, order of operations. If you actually look at this, fire damage happens first, environmental damage happens first, and then enemy actions, and then the enemies emerge. So if I actually look at the air support here, bombs uh, dropped on, on the marked spaces, killing any unit. So they will die. Uh, so what all we really have to do is uh, put these guys out of position. Uh, basically try and position them inside of here somehow. So uh, the best way of doing that... So this, this one's unfortunate because I want to bring one into the tile here. Now I can't just shoot on top of that because it will actually damage the building And when I push them back. I could have given an ability to make the buildings immune, but uh, I don't have that. So I think the best solution here is to maybe just kill this guy. So let's do that. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to move him here, shoot him again. And then we're going to artillery this guy into the line, into the line of fire there. So even though it looks like things are going to die, this guy comes in, and there you go. As I said, order of operations, incredibly important. Alright, and now there's two guys over here. So unfortunately, they're not going even close to uh, the objective here, but uh, that's kind of just the way this works. Now, one of the problems we have is that we can't actually... Um, we are not going to be able to kill this guy, because this guy does one damage, this guy does one damage, so... One of them is going to live, uh, but what we can do is we can push them back. And by the way, buildings are immune to knockback, so we don't have to really care too much about that. Just punch that guy to death. And this guy has to move, but what we can do is we can block one of the spawners. Uh, I think we're going to get the kills, honestly, so... Uh, yeah, this guy's not... I can't even repair him for the turn. Alright, so we blocked one of the enemies. So here they go again. Uh, they're going after the buildings for the most part. This guy did a dumb thing, he's now just dead. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and so we can do some really smart shit by bringing this guy... So this guy we don't have to worry about because as I said, uh, order of operations, he's just dead. But what I can do is I can move this guy back, then take my other bot, and punch him into that guy, but unfortunately, it would appear that I actually need a bit more damage, so I actually made a mistake, so I'm going to reset my turn. I only get to do this once per battle, so uh, like the minute I go back to the island, I just didn't uh, see that coming. Uh, mistakes were made. Alright, so let's change how this works. Actually, he would have. it would have been fine, because he would have. he wouldn't have done anything, so you know what? I'm retarded. My bad. It was actually it was actually the best thing to do, and this guy can just repair himself because nobody else is doing anything. Because we're still gonna have uh, current five, so we just need to kill two more enemies, and the plane is gonna come here and kill one of them. So I think it's gonna be just one more. There you go, six. So the coal plant I think is right here. So as long as that stays alive, we also get energy at the end of this. All right, so this is a little bit unfortunate. Unfortunately, he's now keeping me here as well, so that's a problem. Um, this guy's gonna die if he doesn't get moved, so... But unfortunately, it may not be possible for me to save him. Highly unfortunate. I think I just may have gotten fucked because of RNG. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of a way to save him, because, okay, so the way it works is this guy's webbed right now, so he can't move. He can shoot. So I can, for example, shoot this guy in some direction. Um, but the thing is, there's there's an airstrike coming here, so next turn he's going to, he's going to instantly die, right? Um, and my artillery, I think, is too far away, because the way, the way you can save him is you can, uh, you can artillery shell something. To basically to basically move him out of position and then and then he's fine, but I think he's just dead now actually because I can't I can't save him actually. So I think we're gonna have to just accept our losses here and try and 
save as much as possible here. This guy's gonna need to die. I don't think I can. If I can, then whatever. I don't know. Let's just shell this guy. Yeah, it's really unfortunate, but looks like we're not gonna be able to do anything. So. They both died. And that's what I mean, kind of like, you can get RNG'd. It's basically kind of FTL related stuff, so. Uh, so the pilot was killed and he won't be available for the rest of the mission. Uh, which is highly unfortunate, but he wasn't exactly the good pilot anyways, so. Uh, so he's dead now. Alright, so it tells us, uh, Ori Kirby died after taking severe damage against the creatures. Um, and then now we can just continue. So we can either, yeah, we can do this one, which is, uh, gets us, uh, uh, all this stuff. Coal plant and block them from spawning. So, it's, and, and like I said, he doesn't stop him from spawning. He's gonna be there, but just nobody's gonna be piloting him. It's, it's controlled by the AI. Well, it's not controlled by the AI. I control it still, but it still does some things. Alright, so these two are just kind of threatening this guy. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this guy to bit because he's not attacking. We can push him onto one of the spawners because that's what we're supposed to do. Uh, I guess what we're gonna do is we're gonna just shoot these guys. So, pretty simple stuff. Alright, so he's gonna move up, now he's gonna web that guy. That guy's gonna threaten that guy. Alright. So, we're gonna have to deal with this guy mostly. Um, and I, I, I don't think I can really block any spawners unless I move someone in some kind of inconvenient area. So... Just shoot that guy away. By the way, you can trick them into essentially killing each other though. So, it's kind of nice. I, I, I'm not going to be able to do anything about these guys. And artillery has a minimum range as well, but it's all good. Because that's why we keep this guy in the back. There you go, he's going to fuck up that mountain. Alright, so everything got a bit more health because of that guy. This guy's webbing now. Alright. So there's one spawning there, two spawning there. So I'm not, I'm not getting exactly extremely lucky with this bonus objective, because I'd have to make my own guy stand on top of it. Uh, and I kind of have better things to be doing. So I'm going to just push this guy back. We can also deal with this guy. Because, uh, like, the bonus objective is very pretty important to me, but it's uh, if you can't do it, then you can't do it. Alright, so that's a bad move to make, so I can undo my move there. Uh, so... This guy is shooting up here to kill that building, so what I can do is I can make this guy shift in that direction, so he's in the way now. And we can just punch this guy. I'm gonna, I kinda wanna go a little bit closer, but... There you go, they all lost a bit of health. And uh, there's nothing else we can do with our turn here. Alright. I only have uh, one turn to block two spawners, so we'll see if I can maybe make that happen. I, I would like to make it happen. Or no, I don't. Okay, I can't even do it anymore. So... Uh, this guy's just not attacking for some reason. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push him back. And it looks like I can't really get this guy to do anything, but... It doesn't really matter, because like, all, all, like I said, all we have to do is really just live for one turn. So, we can even like, we can even push this guy into the fire tile. So as long as the buildings are okay, we're all good. So we didn't do the optional uh, optional here. We just didn't have really the chance to do it. This guy would be totally dead next turn. Uh, so he's on fire, but uh, he's fine because the, 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 the order of which the fire would have hurt him uh, happened before the attack, so. Because remember, it always happens first, so. Alright, so we didn't get to do that. So, that's it for that, and then these regions are automatically counted as lost. So you basically just kind of work it out in a way where you get most of, most of what you want out of it. 
And now we go to corporate HQ. So we have to destroy the firefighter leader and do, and and protect the corporate tower. This is the equivalent of kind of like a boss uh, for as far as this game goes. So I'm going to go put these guys back here. This guy is really good, not going to be in a great position actually. Let's put him more like here. Because uh, that way I can kind of shift him down. Because remember I can't fire from the water so. Alright. So this is our boss man, and I'll uh, show you what he does in a sec. Alright, so this is a problem right here automatically. So if I actually hover on him, he, go he does 4 damage and he hits in 2 directions. That's what he does. Uh, his order is the first one. So if I work it out in such a way, like up here, I could actually force him to um, attack something that he doesn't want to first. Um, so he just has like, yeah, he just has this double tech. He can, uh, he can walk in water, but the water will prevent him from shooting. So our bonus objective is actually to, to kill him. So, uh, we have to try some shit out and see if we can make that happen. So it's good to make him try and kill his own kind. Um, so I'm going to push this guy back onto here and push this guy over here, I guess. So, that's all we can really do with that. But we have a lot of HP, so we don't re we don't really super care about this stuff. All right, so this guy's gonna go shoot over here. So now now he's put me into quite the predicament. Um, he's now in the way of. Um, he's now in the way of uh, like if I get if I get this guy out of the way, it's gonna be a problem. Right, because he's going to attack the building, so we don't really want that. And we also would like to kind of be doing damage to him as well, uh, which is kind of like one of those things. And remember, he still attacks first. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this guy out of the way here. And I'm going to try and move him over here. So he's uh, blocking the spawner, and it'll give me maybe an opportunity to punch him up a bit. And this guy will die to the fire. So uh, going in the order of which we chose, he will kill that guy. I'll fire damage first. And he's gonna kill that guy. And there you go. I mean, we blocked all the spawners and damaged him a little bit, so. Alright, so now he's moved over there. Alright. So for this guy, I would like to start uh, dealing some damage to him. Because it looks like we're now gonna be in a position where I can't really do anything to him anymore, so. So this guy is shooting in this direction, uh, and how much damage does he do? One. So it's not very good damage. So I still have my reset. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I just blow him up this turn, maybe. Um, I, I don't think I can because this guy is really weak, actually. So we have problems because this guy is in the way, unfortunately. So I can't bump him too much into that one, but I can shoot him this way. See, it's going to do too much damage to me. And I can't exactly deal with this guy that that effectively either. So we, we're in a tough predicament here. Uh, so do we want to start losing buildings uh, to try and deal with this guy? Or, I mean, we have full energy, so it's not a big deal. Like, obviously, the worst case scenario is I, I start losing units. Like, I would not want that to happen. Um, so, and obviously, if this guy gets hit by, by him, uh, I'm just, he's dead. Like, that's just how it's going to go. Um, no. I really wish this guy wasn't tied up here. <laughs> he is the one problem. And I unfortunately can't move this guy around either. Now the thing is, fire happens before anything else. So, the question is, if I set this tile on fire, I would deal, I think, how much damage would I deal? Oops, we can actually see. I'm right clicking by accident. So I would deal two damage to him. Uh, and then I can, f I can repair this guy for a turn. That's maybe how we'll do it. But the thing is I have to, I have to basically set him on fire first. Like blowing him up would be really cool right now. But it's a tough one. 
I think I think no matter what, I think I'm gonna have to basically take a bit of damage here. This guy's gonna repair himself so he doesn't die. I guess we're gonna spend a turn blocking some of these guys. Just one though. Okay, that should do it. I think I think I, I'm not sure if I was able to save this building, but it's just one building. Uh, uh, he can go. Actually, under the move. Actually, if I move him anywhere, he's. Do I want to? No, I don't. Want, I don't. Even, I don't want to do that. I just want to block his his movement. So actually, it's fine. I just want to block that thing from coming up because one less level come up. So he will get to shoot, and he will. 93 casualties. There you go. That's our first uh, bit of energy damage we've taken for this run. And there we go, we blocked the enemy, and then now they come back up. So at least we can get the objective. What's the deal with this guy? Oh, right, sorry, it's the same, it's the boss guy. Alright, so now, now they're putting us into a... a bit of a, uh, a bit more of a predicament here. Uh, cause these guys are really not a problem. We need to move that guy out of the way, we need to kill this guy, and then we need to punch him away. So, that's, e that's easy to do, actually. Alright. And there you go. Uh, I think that's the end of the turn. And they're gonna hit each other, kind of a deal. Alright, so we had to give up one energy, but we did get a bit more uh, of a reward here. So that's nice. And so we got one more mech move on this character, whoever they are. Understood. So not bad. So now we get to spin our reputation here. Um, and so you get, and it's just like kind of, sort of like FTL's thing. So you get like a uh, science class weapon, pull, one tar uh, pull a target towards you. Um, we have no matching mech class, so one power penalty applies. So we're not going to bother with that. We can also get something that basically goes far as a non-damaging projectile that pushes the tiles around the target. So it says the required power default free. Um, so it's a free, free ability that we can use. But like it does use his turn up. Uh, this guy can fire two projectiles in opposite directions, pushing them back. And this guy has uh, calls on a single airstrike anywhere on the map. It goes damage one, uses per battle one. Uh, but it's like a, it's a long range thing. So maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll try that thing because that seems kind of nice, especially if someone's not in position. So if we go to let's say this guy, there you go. He can have a targeted strike now. So I just want to get out of this. Um, so that's kind of, that's good for. Uh, is it is it him that wants it? No, no, no. I think I want it on this guy because he sometimes cannot be in position. So it, it's a one one use per battle thing, but it can be really clutch, you know. It's actually actually really nice. Uh, so what else do we want? Um, fire two projectiles in opposite directions. That might not be bad, but I think I'd prefer to get reactor core. All right. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're going to give it to this guy so he can do his little dash deck, which means now he's really not the one who should even get be getting this because he has so much to do. So maybe 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 we'll leave it for this guy. Usually I've never had a problem though hitting anything with this. You know, it's 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 a hard question of who to give this to even. I, I, I still, part of me thinks it still should be this guy, but I, I'm going to give it to this guy, actually. Alright, so now we can leave the island. I still have one reputation point. I could put into power grid, but usually I get power grid from the island, so I, I usually don't don't try and do that. Uh, it will be lost if you leave now. Alright, apparently I don't get a choice. Apparently I have to use it. Uh, so, uh, that's important to note. Um, I guess we're going to have to buy the power grid thing. I wish there was like a person that I could have bought or something, but it doesn't look like uh, I would have had that. Acquire weapons, supplies. I'm not sure how to replace your soldiers. I don't know if they're, uh, they are replaceable, but yeah, we can leave the island now. So we've unlocked the RSD Corporation. Um, so this is pretty much as far as I've made it. I, just, I kind of died on this island a couple of times, but we'll see how it goes. 
Anyways, uh, I think that's all the time we got for today. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.